welcome back to the channel i was looking through stack overflow to see some questions and some answers and i landed on this wordpress challenge so i picked it up because it looked interesting and it's something that i've looked at before and i thought why not take on the challenge and really help out the challenge is this person has a, a table that has a brand model color and mileage of the different cars in the different rows and they want to be able to view this information in a custom post type and probably also exhibit that information from the custom post type onto the front end. The big challenge they do have is that this information is coming from a form straight into a database. So how do they do this? How would you do this? So we're going to tackle this in a number of steps and we're going to make sure that we actually make it work. So what do we do? We're going to come here and we're going to open a plugin as always and we're going to call this a uh, stack over question that will be our plugin and then of course we're going to drag and drop that into our editor and then we'll start by creating a php file with the same name uh, open php then we shall use our starter plugin to help us open that so we'll call it stack over question and then I'll change this to my URL and then we shall just have the name we'll just say take you press uh, move stuff from the DB the custom table to CPTs uh, version 1 that will be that will be all good I'll just make it this GPL 2 and save this. So we've opened up our plugin. The next few things that we're going to do is uh, let's plan this out and highlight it inside steps. Uh, what do I mean by that? First we're going to add a custom post type that will allow us to have our information. After the post type we're also going to add some meta boxes because if we look at these, these are properties of a custom post type. If the car is the custom post type we're going to have brand, model, color, and kilometer. These are small pieces of information which I think belong inside meta boxes. So we'll open meta boxes, four of them to be exact. And after opening four of those, we're going to also add another row onto this table so that we have a unique. So we'll add a column, or in databases that's called a field. We'll add a field for auto IDs. And these are the very IDs we shall query for. We shall first of all get our custom post types, pick the auto field that has ID that has been saved as a, a meta box. So we'll make these five. So we'll get that meta box, we'll filter out and say these particular custom post types don't have these IDs. And we're going to check our, dat our database table to see if there are any other fields that don't have similar IDs as the meta uh, meta post that has been saved in the CPTs. So once we find those then we shall use our SQL to only get back the rows that don't have similar IDs uh, registered and then those will be auto inserted inside our CPTs. So that's what we are going to do. So we'll get those IDs, filter the table, of course contrasting with saved meta id in cpt. So that's what we're going to do, uh, about four steps, relatively long but uh, we'll be able to make it and we'll do it very well. So our first step is we're going to make a custom post type and the good thing is that um, the person here has added a custom post type so we're going to just copy that so that when we paste back the information we're giving them exactly what they do need. So the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to copy their meta boxes and we're going to add those meta boxes to our code. So I'll paste this here. Let's see what we have inside our dashboard. So we'll go to install plugins inside our dashboard and we're going to activate our stack of a question plugin. After activating it we'll see we have a custom post type here of auto. So once we go to our post type we see that it's empty, we don't have any post types. When we click add new 
we have our custom post type but we don't see any meta boxes here meaning there is a problem already with our meta boxes so we look at this and we'll see what is needed so when we look at our meta box we'll see we have the id for the meta box we have the title for it we have a callback function there is no way we are going to be getting that field so we remove this past in argument and then we see this is called car reviews which should be the post or the screen and this is wrong the post type we registered here is called auto so we'll need to change this to auto as well this is normal so meaning the fields will be right here under the editor and then high for priority so let's reload that and we see we've made some corrections to make sure that we have our fields here so we have the card make we have also the model so what we're going to do now is we're going to have five fields so I'll just duplicate these to make them two uh, let me increase the real estate we have here so we have the make we have the model we're going to have I'll just look again at our database that we're going to have here so we have color and then we have the mileage so the mileage will be in kilometers we don't need to throw off that unique ID also in here but if we want we can as well just show it and say ID so we'll call this a UID so this step is done and we'll tick off two pieces to be done so I'll just cut this and move this along the way so that we tick off whatever we need and we're done so we've done the custom post type I'll remove this I'll also remove this here because we are still in PHP there's no need to escape it so we've done the meta boxes now what we need to do is we need to add a column and field inside our database so we're going to make a similar database inside our PHP my admin so we'll go for localhost slash PHP my admin and we'll go to our CC CC database and we're going to create a table here which we shall call garage of course it would be prudent for us to add the WP underscore which is the prefix at this time uh, but we can just also leave it plainly uh, but for now let me just add that prefix we're going to have four columns actually five columns at that so we'll click go to add the columns so the first thing that we need is going to be an ID the ID will be an integer uh, we can give it a length and say maybe it will be 120 uh, we never know how many fields there will be it should be always not null it will be auto increment so it will become our primary ID and I think that is good enough the next thing that we need to do is we need to have our brand so we'll have a brand which will be a text uh, we can give it a 120 we need to have our model here which is also similarly going to be a text we'll give it 120 and that will be okay we need to have our color which will also be a text that runs through then finally we are going to have our mileage which should be kilometers so I'll keep it the same as uh, we have here so we have km which is our kilometer it's an integer so once we are done with this we are going to hit our save to actually get our WP garage so when I go inside here you will see that we have our table that has all this information so we're going to insert some fields inside here so since this is auto incrementing we can ignore it but we need to add the different brands so we need to have a fiat fiat panda black uh, so our kilometers will be that we'll have a fiat well it will be a panda model and it will be color black this is not the best way to work with your database but just populating it so that it's actually working well so I'll hit go to have that and then I'm going to do the next piece of information which is Opel Corsa red so we shall also go back to enter and we'll have an Opel it will be a Corsa it will be red in color and it will have this mileage so we hit go and go again and this is inserted so we'll go to our WP garage you'll actually see that we have our fiat and this information has been put in twice so what I'm going to do is just get rid of these two rows I'll say yes so we have our ID and we have this as three so I'll just change this to two 
um, but even if it was 3 it would work. So we have a table here which is similar to this, the only difference is that we have a primary key of ID that is allowing us to work with our garage database table uh, much better. Because we need a primary key in any table you need a primary key. So what we are going to do next is we are going to start querying our custom post type to check if there are any post types that have a metadata that is saved and is similar to the ID. So let's get to that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a function and I'm going to call it check for similar meta IDs. That will be our function. Now inside this function we are actually going to start querying, so we'll need to use the WP query and to make this clean I'll just call it a techie press underscore check blah blah blah. Now this function is going to of course start off with a clean IDs array, so we'll say IDs array in CPT is going to equal to an empty array. So this is the new way of writing uh, PHP arrays, um, if you're not familiar you could be used to having this array and that. It works the same way, it's just that the square brackets are the new way of doing it. So we'll just leave it as that for backward compatibility. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to query for all autos, so we'll say our arg arguments are going to equal to an array semicolon and we're going to look for the post type, post not posty, so we're looking for the post type which is called auto as we have it registered here, auto uh, in the post type when we're registering it, so we need auto, the posts per page and say so we're going to get all the ones that are available, so we'll get a minus one here, I'll make this uh, WPC friendly, that is a WordPress coding standard friendly. Now once we have our arguments the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say let's get our WordPress loop and it's equal to a new WordPress query class, so we bring the WordPress query class in here and we say we'll pass in our arguments from here, so we have our loop and then we'll say while we have any loops, so while loop have posts, if our while loop has any posts here, actually come here and say the loop will be the post. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our ID CPT here and we're going to chain onto it or we're going to say it is equal to, now we need to add the square brackets here to show that it's the array we are adding onto, and we're going to say get meta, get post meta, and what we need here is the ID, so we'll say get the ID which is available to us as a function inside the loop, so we can get the ID, and we're going to get the key which we shall call ID when we are saving it, and we're going to say this should be true because we want it to be single, we don't want it to be an array. And then eventually we're going to return our ID arrays in CPT. So this function is just querying for all the post types, posts of auto, and then it's looking for post meta called ID, and then saving this inside, inside an array. So we have an array of IDs here. Now the next thing that we're going to do is actually going to query our database and find out if there are any IDs that are similar to what is in this array and we're going to remove those IDs and only get the ones that do not exist inside this particular array. So we are going to open up a function, and this function we're going to call our techie press underscore query garage table, and we're going to pass in our information. Now what this function essentially is going to do is that we're going to pass in our global of wpdb, and WPDB is a global variable that passes in the whole class for working with WordPress databases. It allows us to have clean methods of, instead of using like MySQL prepare and all of that, everything comes out clean in WordPress when we use this global for our database. So we're going to say our database table name garage and 
we can add the table prefix to it here at the beginning. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the WordPress, the WPDB, we need to get the prefix. So that will give us the prefix and we shall chain it onto the garage. The reason why we gave this WP is because all these other tables were having WP and you never know what the user at the end of the day will use this table either changing the prefixes and so on. So we need to have that uniformity. That's why I gave it the WP underscore garage here. And that's why we're using the prefix here so that in the future when the prefix is changed, we still have this available uh, for working and it can still do well. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually use MySQL at this point and we're going to say that we need to return some sort of results. We are going to get these results by saying we're going to check our database and inside our database we're going to use a SQL here so we'll need double brackets here, uh, sorry we need double quotations. So we're going to use WPDB and we're going to chain onto it a method that is part of that class and that method is called get results. And get results of course will need to be fed in with the parameters that are needed and the parameters that are needed here are actually SQL. So we're going to do the select, so you need to have some knowledge of SQL and say select all from our table name. So we'll bring in our function here, our variable here. So we're going to get all the results from here and we are going to actually return them as results. So for now let's just test some of these things to see how they do work out. So I'm going to use a WordPress hook which is called a WP and what this hook does is that every time you're working with WordPress it actually is hit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to vadam this, so I'm going to first copy this, paste this here and we can vadam it to see what's going to happen but we know of course we're going to have zero so there is no need for me to do this for now, but we can also just query this. We can query our database table to see what results are actually returned. So let me duplicate this and let me dump uh, what we get here. So go to the end and save this. Let's come back to our back end, just hit the same piece and you'll see that here we get back an array of data and let me just show this better and we'll see that we have an ID of 1 which is a string, we have the brand fiat, model panda and so on and we have our second array of information that is for the brand Opel, model Corsa and so on. So we're getting all our information back from the database safely inside WordPress. So this is working out well as the function that we need. The next step that we're going to do is that we need to juxtapose what we have here and what we get back here. Remember we said we're going to exclude the IDs that are returned from here because that particular custom post type is already saved. So we don't need to have the IDs that are in here coming from of course this ID. We're going to save this ID as a part of the custom post type. So as we adjust with that metadata we'll need to remove that particular information. So how do I tackle this? We're now going to start working on our next function that actually is going to insert into the custom post type. So I'll begin a function here and I'm going to call it a take you press uh, insert into auto cpt and that will be our function and the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to use the WP insert post function of WordPress that takes in an array of information and also takes in an error. But for now we'll take this away because we are not going to error, we're going to have definite data, so we'll use that. So what we need to do is have our post array here, so I'll just copy this and start it from up here. Now. Of course this will be an array, we close it off with a semicolon, but we need values that are going to be passed in here. So let me just check this array function here and we'll see what it looks like in our WordPress our codex. 
and we see that this helps us to insert or update a post by adding new data and the parameters it needs is an ID, it needs a post author, now the ID of course will be auto entered, so it needs a post author, these are optional fields, it needs a date which will be added, it needs a title, so we'll use a title, we need a post status, our post status will be published um, because we want them instantly published, we don't want to leave them as drafts, and then we'll use the post type that we're going to be pasting this information is auto, not post but auto, and then of course we'll need to add our meta input, remember we said we're going to save all the other small information inside our meta input, so those are the pieces of information that we need right now, uh, let me just add them here, so what we're going to need is we're going to need a post title, we're going to need meta input, we're going to need a post type, we're sending this information, uh, we're also going to need a post status for what our post will look like after that information is added. So let me add these in single quotes, and then I'm now going to chain on our post title, so our post title for now we shall strip, we shall use the WP strip all tags, and then essentially what we're going to call this particular field is when we get our information from the database we shall say whatever that result will be, we are going to chain on and say let this be the model, because if you look at this information coming back we have a string here called model, so we're going to have the brand and the model coming first as a name, so we'll have result model, and then I'm going to chain on the brand, so brand and then model will be our title, I'll just add a space in here to make that look a lot better, so we'll have something like Opel Corsa will be the name of that. We can also add on the mileage if we want to, there is no problem with that, so we can do the same thing here, and then we'll just make this in our cam. so that's what we'll need. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to chain here, let's not forget the comma, we'll need to add the meta input, and this is going to be in an array of data, add a comma here, now in our meta input we're actually going to have about four items, so I'll just copy this here, paste them here, so what we're going to need first of all as metadata is we're going to need our ID, which will allow us to have something that is unique, uh, remember this is the ID that we'll use to contrast against all the information coming in from this particular function, where we query the CPTs and get the metadata stored as ID, so we need to save this ID here, and we shall equate that to our ID, so result ID, put a comma here, and then let me duplicate this three times, so we'll have a brand, I'll make this a small b, we'll have a model, small m, and then finally we'll have our kilometer, this will be a small k, brand, that's fine, add a comma, we'll add a comma after our model, and then we're going to add our kilometer here, and also add a comma to keep it friendly with WordPress, and then we just need to do the same thing here, and add and chain the different pieces of information, so we know that our post type will be auto, so single quotes auto, that's where we need to send that information, and then here we also add single quotes and say we need this to be published, so save this here. Now we're getting that information and then we're sending it inside our post type, but no post type will be created here, even if we run this particular function, so I'll run this here, I'll change that, so even if we run WP action we're not going to get anything because this will be broken, there is no reference for this, so what we need to do at this point is we need to go back and start querying our database and then compare the two uh, pieces of information. So we're going to have a variable here which we shall call car available in CPT array, and it's going to equal to this particular function, take a press check for similar meta IDs, 
probably this is, is not the best name to be descriptive here, but that's the function that we'll need and that is going to give us uh, the information. So we can actually var dump this to see what's coming in. So I'll just var dump this information here, copy, paste this, and then I'm going to do a die. That will allow us to kill our process from here and we shall not post anything inside our uh, pieces here. So if I come back the same place here you will see we have an array of zero. So we need to actually check that and say if it is zero then ABCD is going to happen or ABCD is not going to happen. So we already have an array of meta IDs already showing us here. So what we need to do is actually we need to pass these meta ID arrays inside our query garage table. So we're going to bring this here as a function and we're going to pass in our available car in the CPT because we want to receive it here. So I'll pass this as an argument in here so that we can readily receive it here. And the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to call this as our database results. So we want our database results to come here, so I'll use this to, I'll actually just over dump it here to see what we get back. So inside our database here we are going to do a variation in terms of the queries that we do. If the car available in CPT array is equal to zero or is null or is equal to a string of zero or is empty, we are going to run this straight out. We're going to get our results as this. However, if we have some values in our array of the CPT array, then we're going to run a different kind of SQL query. So let me do this uh, first and foremost. So we'll get this here and say if then run this. So we will say our results are equal to that and we shall return results that's what we shall return. But what are we querying for? What, what's the uh, if? We're going to say if this is equal to null, so we we'll put null first and then we say it should be of the same type and it should be equal to that. We are also going to say or if it's empty, if it's equal to zero as a figure, we can also add another uh, condition to make sure that it is right or it's a string of zero as we see here we have an array of zero that came back. Let me wrap this so that we can read it. We can also say if what we are getting here, if this car available array is actually empty. So we can also say if it is empty, so I'll paste this here, take this off. If it is empty then we run this and get our results. Otherwise, so we'll say else, else we're going to have a different way of meaning. If it's empty or it's zero that's it. If it has some figures in it then it's going to be something different. So otherwise we shall return results but we're first of all going to choose a different SQL uh, to query for our data. So first things first is we shall write and say our IDs will equal to and we're going to use an implode method here to get our data out. So we use our implode and we're going to say we want to strip over particular information. So we want to get the commas out. So single quotes here, we'll get the commas. We want to take the commas out and the space and we want to take those out from our car CPT variable. That's the first thing that we want to do. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to write an SQL statement and say our SQL will actually equal to double quotes, terminate that and say it's going to equal to select all from and we shall bring in our table name and we are going, we're going to get all the rows from our table name where the ID, if you remember our ID, where the ID here is actually not in. So it's not in and then we shall pass in those arguments whereby we are talking of the IDs. These IDs that we implored have to be in here. So for example if we have two or three 
of 4 those will have to be taken out so that's why we add our IDs inside here. So once we have our SQL ready here we're going to use this same method and say our results will equal to this but at this point we're just going to pass in our SQL because we have set it out as a variable so we'll just pass in our SQL. We have in both cases results returning and we save these as a database. So let's see what happens. We'll save this, come back and reload and you see it brings back all two arrays from inside our database. That is good, so that is brilliant. Now we're going to just use, I'll comment this out and say since our, our results come back as an array we're going to use a for each statement. So we'll say for each, so for each database results as result as a single result at that point we are going to get all of this here and then we're going to move it inside our for each statement. So for each result that comes back we are going to get all the information that comes back as a result brand, as a result model, as a result kilometer as we are seeing it from here then we are looping through that and inserting that as a post. So let's save this and see what happens. So I'll reload this and reload it again and you'll see that we get our Opel Corsa coming back with the number and Fiat Panda coming back as that. If I reload this over and over and over and over and over and over again you're going to see that we don't get any other results coming in because we are exclusively checking for um, whether they are similar IDs with this metadata. So let me just click inside one of these, let me edit it. Uh, this data is not showing here so let's show it so that we can be able to actually confirm that it is true. So inside our value here I'm going to open some PHP tags, echo and say get post meta which is what we need. Now inside this we shall just be able to say get the ID, get the ID, the function and then we're going to pass in the metadata, we want to get the ID here and then we're going to say this is true and of course pass a semicolon and save this. So we're just echoing out what has already been saved. So when I save this let me reload this, oh this is get post meta, sorry get post meta and when we reload this you'll see that we have our two actually here. I'll just copy this and paste it in the different fields and we'll paste in their respective IDs and you'll see that it actually works out. So here we have brand, brand, have model, we have color and then finally we have km for kilometer or mileage. Reload this, you'll see this information shows up here apart from color which we didn't save here. So I'll reload this and we'll have color and this will be related to color. I'll spell this right and save this. So this is not working out well, let me trash this and delete it from our trash. This will also help us see whether our code is logically right. So you will see that it automatically fetches it again and when we see Fiat Panda it doesn't have this so I'll also trash this. Automatically it has been fetched again so we have Fiat Panda and we have our color black here and we have our Opel red here. So we only have two post types in our databases here so even if we made a mistake they would automatically come back and we just need to clean our trash to make sure everything is okay. So we have our two pieces here, it means our code is working out well, it's not duplicating any post types as adding them but rather it's giving us all our information coming out really neatly and well here. So we couldn't decide to just make these fields read onlys so that nobody is tempted to feel like you know what I can actually edit this uh, content so we can add a read only field here which is uh, part of HTML and this is just for user experience. So if I reload this you'll see that these are grayed out. 
somebody knows they are not going to be able to edit them, even if they type, they cannot edit them. So everything is actually working out well and nice. Now I can make this code a little more improved because right here when we are querying our database results we were checking to see what comes back. So if we check in our database and there is no information coming back, there is no need for us to run this code right here. So I'm just going to use this if function that we have here, paste it here, because it's more or less similar to what's happening and I'm going to say the database results. If the database results are either null or zero or a string of zero or it's empty, then all we need to do is actually return. We don't do anything. Otherwise, if it's more, then we get to add more information from here. So let's test this out. I'll leave this verdam so that we can see more. So what we're going to do is we're going to manually add another field here to insert a row. So we'll just say maybe Toyota and then we'll add Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, Toyota Mitsubishi is one company. I'm not really good with cars. So Toyota Mitsubishi and we'll say it's a pickup and we'll say maybe it is white, then it has a mileage of uh, whatever that is and hit go. So we'll pass that in. Let's check our WP garage. We'll see it's duplicated it. Uh, we'll just leave only one here. So we have it five here, a reload, just to check. You see our database coming back with zero as a field, but let me allow this to pass through, so reload this. So we can actually see that our test is broken. The first time it returns all the data, but the second time it's not returning it uh, because something is broken. So let me just troubleshoot this. Let's check for database, Vadamp database, that's returning zero, but that should be impossible because the database is supposed to return some information. Let's look for the available in CPT array. So we reload, we have our two variables, we have one and two showing up here. So what could be the problem? So let me just vadamp here and see what we get for IDs. We have one and two and they look really weird. It's a string. Let's see what happens. Let's try to check if we get back any database results and reload here. We'll actually see that we get back one item in our array of Mitsubishi pickup and kilometers and all of that. So this is working out well. It has contrasted everything that needed to be contrasted and sure thing everything is working out well. So I'll save this. We can take out all of this that is bad dumping to leave our code clean and let's see if it passes this test because the DB results will not be negative. Let's see if it actually saves our auto, our post. So when we hit it you'll see that we have our Toyota Mitsubishi pickup and when we edit that it has a UID, it has everything, it's just working out fine and it's fantastic. It's actually working out the way that I expected it to be. So that is one way you can save. This information is already saved in the CPTs, you can actually throw this on the front end and use it in any way that you want to. So go ahead, try it out, see, let me know how you've enjoyed this code. Let me know if it has been helpful, if it has pointed out some things to you. And that's how we can work with the database. So I was adding flat data here, but maybe in the next video I could show you how you can make your own form that sends the data directly from the front end inside your database. What do I mean? I want us to automate this whole process of you saying I want to insert a row and then say I want to add a Toyota 
and the Toyota will be a Corolla, and it will be a saloon car, saloon cars, it's a saloon car already. So this could be blue, and it had, could have a mileage of just a few kilometers. I'll add this. So one of the things that we've been realizing is when we go to our table, we see we've added the information twice. I don't want that to happen, I just want it to be only once. Just to test our code again, if we hit this here, you'll see that it actually has four pieces. And we have our Toyota Corolla with all our information. So it's working out very well. Um, it's relatively performant and this is all, all the code that we needed. So let me know what you think about this. If you'd like to see more of issues like this uh, tackled and cleaned out, let me know uh, what you think. You could share your own trouble that you're having. So thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed to it because we have very many interesting things coming. Like the video and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and enjoy yourself.